Okay, so welcome back. This is part five in our series, Control Systems Made Easy. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos in the series um, where we show you, we give you a very simple, conceptual, and intuitive understanding of how control systems work rather than what you normally see, which is, you know, university professors giving you 25 pages of equations and calculus and differential equations. Uh, here, we're going to show you the, the basic concepts. So what you can do is Hopefully, if you understand the intuitive concepts, you can then develop your own equations and see how they work. And what we did in the previous videos is we talked about the concepts and we used as an example you driving a motorcycle. And that's because it turns out you are a really, really good control system. So we use that concept to help understand. And in a previous video in this series, we even developed our own software simulator like you see here. We showed this simulator where we're simulating um, you driving the motorcycle and in blue, um, you're, you're starting at zero miles per hour and you slam the throttle up to maximum. And in red, we see the response of the motorcycle, the miles per hour. And you can see over here 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds uh, it's getting up to around 110 miles an hour. And this is a very simplified but very good intuitive example of an actual motorcycle. And we even used um, actual data, test data from this motostats.com website for just a random uh, Honda motorcycle that shows uh, the actual response as you slam the throttle to maximum, the response in miles per hour over about 35 second uh, period and we're up to around 110 miles an hour. And we modeled that in this um, simple application and we use C sharp. You can use any language you want. It's a very simple model we can develop in here. And in the previous video, we talked about the basics of this C sharp application or whatever application you want. And in this video, we're going to look at a couple classes in our software. Here we've got a C sharp application in Visual Studio, and we're going to look at two classes, basically two objects, one of which is the machine. We're modeling the machine, uh, which represents an engine, takes a throttle or gas position as input, and the output is engine speed miles per hour. And we also have the controller, the actual control system. And we're starting out with a basic proportional controller we talked about in the previous videos. So what we're going to do in this video is go through the details of these two classes, these two models of the machine and the controller. So first, let's take a look at this machine. And we set up this class machine previously, and we've broken it up into properties, constructor, and methods. So as we said, it represents an engine which takes an input of throttle or gas pedal position, and the output is engine speed in miles per hour, as we saw in those plots. So first of all, let's start with the properties. As if you can imagine, if you think of the properties of a motorcycle, for example, uh, it has a property of the minimum throttle value and the maximum throttle value. You can make those values whatever you want, but we're going to use a value of 0 to 1 and make them as doubles. We're also defining the maximum miles per hour of the motorcycle, which again is dependent on the motorcycle. And as we showed before, we have a constant which represents kind of the response of the motorcycle as you change the throttle. And different motorcycles are going to have different uh, responses and result in kind of a different B factor. And again, we talked about this in the previous videos. So we've got these basic inherent properties of the motorcycle. We also have the real time values of input and output. And the input is the throttle position which is a double, and the engine miles per hour is the output, and that's going to be a double. Um, we have a constructor. Um, again, this is a machine class, so we have a constructor called public machine, and it takes in a maximum speed miles per hour, uh, minimum throttle, throttle value, maximum throttle value, okay? So if you're instantiating a, a machine, you tell it what the limits are, and we'll look at the constructor. And really, the constructor doesn't do much. It basically takes the input values and assigns them to these local properties, right? So max speed MPH becomes max, the local max MPH, 
And then we've got the min throttle value coming in. We assign it to the local variable. And then we set the uh, real-time throttle position. We initialize it to zero as well as the engine and pH. And that's about it for the constructor. And all that's left now is this one method to get the speed. And as we showed in the previous videos, there's really not much to this. It basically will take a throttle position and use this very simple equation we talked about previously using this B factor, which is kind of um, a constant associated with the particular machine you're modeling. And we're saying the, the new engine speed, we're, we're running through this as we showed before every time step, and we're taking the throttle position and calculating the new engine miles per hour based on the new throttle position, this B factor, and the time step. And we're adding that additional speed to the um, present speed and calculating the new miles per hour. So really the same equation we used before. Very simple. You take the time step times that B factor times the present throttle position to get the new engine miles per hour. And this is kind of differential equations, 101. And it basically will give you this response to a immediate change in throttle position. The differential equation will give you this. So that's it for the um, machine class, all right? A very, very simple model. Now in the real world, it's gonna be a, a lot more complicated than this, but this is like the major component of the machine class as we showed with the uh, specific Honda motorcycle. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is the controller. And the controller has a little bit more to it, but it's in the same format. We've got the public class controller and we've got properties, constructor, and methods. So first we'll look at the properties. We are inputting, as we talked about before, a proportional gain. We're also going to, uh, in the future, implement this integral and derivative gains. We haven't done that yet, but we're just uh, assigning those as um, doubles for properties of the controller, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, we've got a double, which is the mile per hour to throttle ratio. Again, we talked about you find out the difference, the error in where you want to be in terms of mile per hour and where you are, and it converts that error to a value that the machine can use, the, a throttle ratio that the machine can actually use, and that is this double right here. And then we have a double of the minimum throttle limit because this controller can only uh, give you an output that, that corresponds to what the throttle can accept as an input. So there's a minimum and maximum limit, just like motorcycle throttle on a handlebar, you can only turn it a certain amount. And then we have some real-time values, which is the desired miles per hour, and that can change as we adjust the throttle. And then the real-time throttle position, and then the real-time error miles per hour. Very simple properties of the controller. Now the constructor, we, we feed it the proportional gain, the integral gain, which we're not using yet, the derivative gain we're not using yet, the mile per hour to throttle ratio, the, and the minimum and maximum throttle limits. And then here, the controller constructor basically assigns these inputs to the um, properties, the internal properties of the class. Um, proportional gain equals prop gain and so on. Uh, we're initializing throttle position to zero and we're setting the throttle limits equal to what we input. And that's basically it for the constructor. Very simple. Um, model of our controller. Now, in this case, we have some more methods that we're going to need to consider. We've got the main controller, and as we said before, that has some subcomponents of which we're only using one. We're only going to use the proportional right now to keep it simple, but you can also in the future have an integral or derivative controller part, and all of these add together inside the main controller. And then we have a method to calculate the error. As we said before, you take the actual speed, the reference speed, and calculate the error. And then here we have a set limits. We mentioned before that the controller has limits that it has to abide by because of the physical 
uh, requirements of the machine, so we have a set limits. So let's take a look at these methods. Um, main controller, we put in the desired miles per hour, and it goes through and then calls these proportional integral and derivative methods to calculate their values. We set the desired mile per hour coming in to the local property, and then we call calculate error to get an error miles per hour. And all this does is it says, what's the desired miles per hour? What's the actual miles per hour? And gives us an error. And then what we do is we calculate a throttle position based on that error, and it uses the proportional integral and derivative to give you an overall error and then divide that by the mile per hour to throttle ratio to convert it to a throttle position. Again, the machine can't use a, a miles per hour error. It has to have a throttle position. So you have to convert that error miles per hour into a throttle position. And then once we've got the throttle position, we make that abide by whatever limits we've got. So we feed that throttle position into um, this set limits and we feed it the, the limits it has to maintain. And what it does is it basically makes sure that the throttle position doesn't go outside those limits. And then it re returns the throttle position. So let's look at the proportional gain. We feed it the error and all it does is it takes the proportional gain times the error and gives the proportional out. Uh, we're going to ignore the integral and derivative right now and just go to calculate error. Now calculate error basically takes, as we said before, the desired miles per hour minus the actual engine mile per hour and returns that. That's the error as we showed previously in the um, previous videos. Again, we're using this SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition model. And that's going to be of use uh, in the future. And we talked about this previously, but this right now is just holding some public data that uh, we can access from our uh, methods. SCADA is holding the present miles per hour, and uh, we just calculate the difference to return the error. So very simple. And the last thing we do is we set limits. And very simple, again, you take the input and the minimum and maximum, and if the input is greater than the maximum, you just set the input to the maximum. So the input can't go past maximum and can't go below minimum, and it just returns that. So that's basically it for these two classes. And we talked about the rest of this in the previous video, uh, I believe in uh, number three in this series, so I encourage you to look at that. And when you run this, you can see now that we have our um, final C sharp or whatever application and we can put a proportional gain in here. Let's choose 1.3. Start the simulation. You can see we're plotting engine miles per hour and throttle. Here's our throttle control. We're going to maximum. We're slamming it to the top. You can see the blue throttle plot is up here and the speed is in red and it increases and increases. And uh, you can see the actual speed is getting up to 100 miles an hour. We want to go up to 120. And the throttle position is dropping down to zero because, as we mentioned, if you're on a motorcycle and you're getting up to the desired speed, you turn back the throttle to almost zero now. And here you are up at the desired speed and you're all done. So that's our software model of our control system. And we can add to that, as I mentioned, with integral and derivative. But I encourage you, if you want to understand control systems, don't just download stuff and run it. Yeah, and, and don't just, you know, like run a MATLAB simulation or whatever. Write your own software. It's so much, it's so much better to actually do things yourself and not just copy and download other people's work. Um, do this yourself. Learn how to do things yourself. And when you do that, you learn a lot better. You understand things to a lot more depth than rather than, than just downloading something and making believe you understand it. So that's it for the C Sharp or whatever application. Uh, in future videos, if we continue, if we get some views, unfortunately, we haven't gotten any views in this series. We got like 170 views in the last three months, which is kind of depressing. But um, I encourage you, if you like any of these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, 
Please let others know that we're here so we get some views, so we have some encouragement to continue. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.